All right, let me tell you that I'm super excited about what I'm about to show you because it solved a big problem for me and it made me excited about some new cameras that at first I wasn't too sure about. This video is going to focus mainly around the Micro Ego from Runcam, but the same is true for a lot of the new CMOS cameras. Let's backtrack a little bit so it starts making a lot of sense. There's mainly two types of cameras, the CCD camera, which is this guy, the new Swift, uh, Micro Swift 3, and the HS1177 P00420 that we used to fly back in the day. Those are all CCD cameras. And, and then the new ones, like the Predator, uh, the Micro Ego, the Ego Pro, Ego 2, Ego 2 Pro, those are all CMOS cameras. And it's basically the sensor. The sensor that's in the camera you're looking at me through with is a CMOS. The CCD is stuff that used to be used or is still used in security cameras. But let's let's go back. So when, when I first started flying like four years ago, everybody was flying mostly 2.8 lenses. And uh, 2.8 is just too narrow these days. Eventually someone figured out, oh, you know what, let's put a 2.5 from a GoPro on it. And it was like, wow, you know, it looks a lot better. And there were people flying 2.1s, but they weren't that popular at the time. Eventually people figured out, oh, you know what, it's better to be able to see, have a good period for vision, even though on a wide lens, what's in the middle of your picture looks smaller. You can still see it. So the trade-off is still there, but it's not a bad trade-off. You can get a lot better peripheral vision with a wide lens. Even if your object in the center are kind of smaller and your gaps look smaller, you get used to it. Uh, a lot of the freestyle guys have settled on a 2.5. Uh, the most popular freestyle pilots out there uh, um, fly a 2.5, and the reason for it is, it is narrow enough to make the objects and the gaps look big enough, but not too narrow where everything looks really jittery. See, the, the narrower the lens, the more movement you see. It's the same thing when you have a zoom camera, when you zoom in, it's a lot harder to keep it stable because the frame is so small and it's pointing at such a small object that every movement looks really jittery. And when you go really wide, everything looks really stable. It's the reason the GoPro looks so stable. So if you fly a 2.5, which is relatively narrow, and you're able to be very smooth on the sticks, the picture on the GoPro is gonna look very smooth. Now, if you fly a 2.1 or a 1.8, that's something that I like a lot, you have to be extra careful because even though your picture looks really smooth, it might not be as smooth as you think, and then it doesn't transfer very well to the GoPro, so that's the trade-off. However, for racing, it doesn't matter. For racing, you want to be fast. So you want to be able to look around corners. You want to be able to, as soon as you pass a gate, you can see what's coming next, see the next flag, see the next gate. And and steady picture is not necessarily the most important thing. It looks great in FPV view. doesn't look that great in the GoPro if you're not very, very smooth. But the point is that wider is usually better for racing. And I race a lot, so I've gotten used to such a wide lens that even on my freestyle rigs, I, I fly... 1.8, 2.1, 2.3, I don't even fly 2.5 anymore. Uh, I'm so used to the wide angle lens. Now, the the wide, the the, the width of, of your picture, of what you're seeing is measured in degrees. So if you could see from side to side a half circle, you're, you can have a, a 180 degree field of view, which is rare and almost impossible, however, 170 degrees, which is slightly closed in, and 160 is very possible. These cameras do it all the time, and they're great for racing. Now, as soon as you start going lower, I think 2.5 on a CCD camera produces a 140 field of view. And, you know, and that's, that's the way it keeps going. 2.8 will be even narrower. But here's a trade-off. The size of a CMOS sensor and the shape is different than the shape of a CCD. What does that mean? That means that when you have a lens that is tuned and designed to go over a CMOS lens, it is not going to look the same way over a CCD lens and vice versa. These new cameras have a size, a lens size and thread pitch for as same as a full size cameras and it also happens to be the same as a CCD or a CMOS camera in terms of the lens size, the, how it screws on. But that's where the similarities end. See, at this point, you can screw all those lenses in, but they're not gonna react the same way. So let's, let's, let's put it this way. 
don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that a CMOS sensor is not designed to be naturally or by default 4-3 ratio. 4-3 is the ratio that a lot of us like to fly. It is the ratio that the old CRT TVs used to watch. And a lot of people claim that 4-3 is what your, per your vision normally focuses and looks at. It's like, maybe that's why they did it on the original TVs because it was supposedly to be like the human vision. But the most popular uh, aspect ratios are 16 by 9 and then 4-3. And then a lot of cameras like the one you're looking at is 3-2. But we don't fly 3-2. But the point is that I'm pretty sure that the CMOS sensor is designed for either a 3-2 or 16 by 9 um, aspect ratio where the CCD cameras are 4-3 native. What does that mean? When these guys like Runcam and Foxy and whatnot, uh, they make these cameras, there's some compromises. They did the CMOS cameras and naturally and by default, they're supposed to run a 16 by 9. And if you want to look at the picture in 4-3, all that happens is you're chopping off the edges because physically the sensor doesn't do 4-3. So when you have the image from the lens shooting over and reflecting on the sensor, on a full on the full size of the sensor, you want to see 4-3? It gets chopped off. Guess what? You're losing a lot of the picture. Same thing, you know, back when we were switching from 4.3 TVs to 16 by 9 you lost uh, the edges when you chopped the movie in 16 by 9 down to 4.3. Same, same thing. That causes a problem because you have this camera that has a 1.8 lens. So with 1.8, you're supposed to get a 170-ish field of view, which is very wide, but it only happens in 16 by 9 so if you are a guy that flies 4.3 like I do, guess what? Your awesome 60 by 9 image, no, um, the 170 degree image that you want is now 140 degrees, equivalent to a 2.5 lens on a CCD camera when you run in 4.3. And that creates a big problem because it's just not wide enough. And I know guys that are fast and have gotten used to that. And I haven't found a solution. I was just like, that's what it is. But then, I got to thinking and I was like, hold on, if the picture gets chopped off at the edges, let's put a, a, a narrower, a wider lens and see what happens. So I ended up putting a 1.8 on it. The problem is it doesn't work because the 1.8 that I use is normally tuned for these size cameras, for the CCD sensors, and it ends up looking over a CMOS sensor like you're in a tunnel. But this is the big deal and what I discovered and what I'll be using in the whole point of this video. A 2.5 lens designed for a CCD sensor works perfectly over a CMOS sensor in 4.3. Let me explain that, let me repeat that again. A 2.5 lens that's designed for a CCD sensor works perfectly over a CMOS sensor and provides 170 fields of view. That is the whole thing about this video and what I'm so excited about. So this lens is a 2.5 run cam lens that is used on the Rotor Riot uh, Swift 2. It is a 2.5 designed for a CCD camera. When you put it over a CMOS sensor at 4.3, it gives you the 170 field of view. This, is, this video is mainly focused on the guys at 5.4.3 because it, that same lens, if you make this camera and set it to the 16 by 9 setting, then guess what? You're going to start seeing the edges of the tube here, of the edge of the lens. So the reason Runcam and these companies ship these cameras with this 1.82 lens, tuned lens, is because it needs to work in both 16 by 9 and 4.3. They're not going to ship you with a lens that only works on one or the other. So there has to be some kind of compromise. But if you only fly 4.3, you put this lens on and you don't have to worry, you change the camera from 16 by 9 to 4.3 and you have your 170 field of view. Boom, done. I'm, I'm going to actually show you how it looks. So in order to do that, my test is the following. I've put this little bit of tape here so that I can always put the cameras in the exact place. And this bottle of flux remover and my little speaker here are in roughly 
that angle so you can see as a point of reference how much wider or how much narrower the picture is. Is I'm going to record the image and um, yeah and put it on the video. So let's just see what we got here. And I'm going to hit DVR. Let me mark it with something so I know what I'm looking at because I got a bunch of other videos in this DVR. In this uh, card. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause it for a second because I think this card is full. Okay, we're back in action. Let's get this part done. This video is getting longer than I was planning on it being, so let's do it quick. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna record it so it, oh, so you can see it. So I'm gonna start with the stock micro eagle in my little box here. And I'll move it up and down. And then notice how the little speaker to the left and the bottle to the right are pretty close to the edge of the screen. Notice the lamp is like directly in front of me. And then the bottle and the speaker here and there. There's this gap about a finger deep, big, one, two, more or less, depending on how I, okay, great. Now we're going to use the one with the 2.5 on it. Now remember 2.5 for CCD over a CMOS sensor, same place. And as you can see, notice how big of a gap we have on each side now. See that? And you get no, no black on the sides from the, from the lens itself because this is in 4.3. So see, that's how you get a 170 degree field of view on a CMOS sensor. You just put a 2.5 from a CCD on it. And this for racing will be awesome. To give you one last example, I'm going to show you how it doesn't work on 60 my 9 I haven't tested it yet, but I'm pretty sure it won't. We go to 60 my 9 and now you see the edges here and there it looks like a 2, so it doesn't work. Uh, of course, this is not a 4.3 lens, but the point is, it's distorted. But the point is that the, uh, the edges are there. So, yeah. Let's go back to 4.3. And everything's fine the way the world. Yep. So, yeah. I'm pretty excited about this. Let me save this before it breaks. There we go. Uh, super excited about this. It uh, means I'm going to get more of these cameras because I, I like the wide format, but I wasn't sure how to get it. That's how you get it. Share this with people. My, my channel is not that big, but I'm sure this can help a lot of people. So please share it. Share it on RC groups. Share it on Facebook. Share it with your friends. Post it on Twitter. Post it on your Instagram. Just share it. Help, help me grow this thing. And subscribe. If this was helpful for you, uh, definitely subscribe. Thanks.